What's up everyone, Vu of Envo Films back with another video and today I finally have my Sony FX30 here for review and testing. I'm not going to do the full review today, uh, mainly because I haven't shot anything that is legitimate, you know, professional shoot, wedding, whatever yet, so I'm not going to try to give a review based on just studio testing. But I was able to take it out today to do a vlog test used the 11 millimeter uh, Sony f1.8 lens, put active stabe on, did some vlogging. I don't usually vlog, uh, but those of you who are interested in that, here's the footage. All right, guys, I am just, as you know, I have the Sony FX30 and I am just doing a quick vlog test. Check an exposure here. You know, to see what it's like currently on the 11 millimeter f 1.8 lens, Sony 11 mil Sony 11 millimeter f 1.8, and uh, on active stabe 4K 24 FX 30, and I'm just holding the camera with my hand. This is what that looks like. And uh, yeah, so that was it. It seems like it walks around pretty stable. What do you think? Uh, very light feeling camera. Um, all I have is a Sennheiser MK200 uh, for audio. Um, and uh, yeah, now I'm just holding it with my hand and driving. So this is how stable it is, FX30 while driving active stabe on with the Sony 11 millimeter F1.8 lens, 4K 24. You see me, I'm lying. Here's the actual setup. FX30 with the 11 millimeter F1.8 lens, Sony. 11 millimeter F1.8. 4K 60p, active stave on, handheld. Overall, my review, I think the FX30 works great for vlogging. Like, it's small, it's light, and as you can see, it's quite stable, especially in active stave mode with a wide angle lens. Should have no problems there if you're that kind of tube doucher. Now, before I get started, in these other tests that I did, uh, which is pretty much just resolution sharpness test in 1080, in 1080, 24 and 60 P 4k 24 and 60 P versus the Sony FX three, which I'm filming on right now and the Sony a seven four. And just to be clear, I'm testing an FX 30, an $1,800 camera, versus an A7 IV, which is $2,500, and an FX3, which is $3,900, including the audio attachment. The FX3 that I have, I used 24 millimeter GM as a test lens, and for the FX30 and the A7 IV, because the FX30 is APS-C, and I'm using the A7 IV in APS-C mode, obviously, to match the 60 frames per second, I'm using a Sony 15 millimeter f1.4 G lens. So there is difference in lens focal length, but the field of view is the same because I'm comparing a crop sensor versus a full frame sensor. So the 15 millimeter G lens gets me pretty close to 24 millimeter full frame equivalent. Uh, keep in mind that I shot all of these test footage in f1.4. So with the Sony FX3 at f1.4, the depth of field will be shallower. Uh, I could have stopped down to like f2 but lenses when you stop down usually get sharper so just keep these things in mind um, when you look at the test and also please keep in mind that if you are interested in a Sony FX30 you should absolutely 100% buy it okay if 
you need a B or C cam for your FX30, if you need a B or C cam for your FX3, your A7S3, FX6, FX9, buy the FX30. If that's, you know, if that's the budget you're looking at, buy the FX30. Uh, actually, with any budget. I mean, you know, people want to complain. People want to say things like, oh, it's a hobbyist camera. It's not a professional camera. Y'all are some dumbasses. Like, seriously. Like, come on. 10-bit, 422, up to 120 frames per second, crop or not, 60 frames per second, plethora of E-mount glass. This camera is a beast. But with that said, let's get to the test footage. So here is probably my greatest disappointment with the FX30 is that it's 1080p, both in 24 and 60p is nothing close to what the FX3 and the Sony a7 IV is and the a7S3 is. Uh, the 1080p in the FX30 looks quite soft. It looks better than like the A6000 series of cameras. Uh, maybe it looks similar or a little bit better than the a7 III, um, but it does not even, it is certainly not as crispy, not as detailed as the FX3 or the a7 IV in APS-C mode in 1080p in 24 or 60p. They pretty much look the same across 24 and 60p. Uh, you could literally nitpick between the FX3 and the a7 IV in this department. They both look fantastic. Now, once you get into 4K, all these cameras are just ridiculous, right? You really have to nitpick to see which one is better. Based on specs alone, the FX3 should be the least detailed and the least sharp because it's a one-to-one -one readout of the 12 megapixel sensor for the most part, whereas the ASM4 and FX3 are downsampled from like 6K, 7K, whatever. I'll be quite honest with you. I can't tell the difference and I'm not going to sit here and zoom in 400% for you to look at all of my like uh, imperfections on my face. I'll save you that. You're not going to be throwing up today, but you know, if you want to zoom in on your end, go ahead. But they all look fantastic and the colors match up pretty well. I did not mess with the colors at all. I pretty much just left the color. I pretty much just put my LUT on the footage and I just left it and that's what it looks like and I did not do any minor adjustments there is some slight color difference between the FX3 um, the FX30 and the a7 IV looks pretty identical in my opinion so I'm gonna just chalk it up to being the differences in lenses so lenses do cause different colors um, lenses do cause different colors in cameras uh, so one is a 24G Master and one is a 15 millimeter um, G lens. And hey, look, you are looking at a comparison between a $1,800 camera with a $800 lens totaling like $2,500, $2,600 versus a $3,800 camera versus a $3,900 camera with like a $1,300 lens. So you're you're talking about a huge difference in price here. You're talking about like $5,100, $5,200 versus a mere $2,600 setup. And look how close they look. This value cannot be beat. So all of you haters on the FX30, because APSC, you are the biggest D-bags on the planet. And with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. I will be doing, again, a review on this FX30. Later, this will include low light performance and all that jazz after I do a legit shoot. I am doing, I am filming a wedding this weekend, which is a few days from now, and I will use the FX30. So, hey, if you're trying to look at that, hit the subscribe button, like the video, and until next time, lighten up. Hey, man, you just get the FX30? Yeah, man, I just got it. about to test it out. If you want to be the best YouTuber, you need to do the unbox video. Nah, man, I ain't trying to do all that. Come on, man, you want to get sponsored by Storyblock? You need to do the unbox video. Bro, I really just want to try to use this camera real quick, man. I can do so fat. All right, then why don't you do it? Mm.
let me show you. Oh my god, today I have the Effect 30. It has an APS-C camera. It threat because only full frame is professional. If you want to use APS-C, you need to use the Canon C70. C stands for Color Shine because Canon Color Shine is the best. Dude, you're crazy, man. I crazy for Canon Color Shine.